everybody, Jennifer Maker here. It's a beautiful day to make the biggest project in the history of this channel. Today's project starts with these pretty paper flowers, but it gets so much bigger and even more beautiful. And to do that, we're going to use a lot more paper than usual and well, we need a wall. <laughs> so that's right, today we are making a full eight foot by eight foot paper flower backdrop wall for photos and parties, and it is going to be amazing. So like you, I've been admiring all of the beautiful paper flower walls that have been popping up lately. Weddings, proms, even the Grammys and the Met Gala have had them, but they can cost more than a thousand dollars to rent. Seriously, I'm not even kidding. And I knew with some imagination, a little cardstock, maybe a lot of cardstock and a cutting machine, we could make our own. And now I can show you how. If you don't have space for an entire wall of flowers, don't worry, I have some fun ideas for smaller projects too. So come with me to my craft table and we will get started on making this gorgeous flower backdrop. So let's go over everything used for this awesome project. It all starts with paper flowers. I'm using a mix of my Dahlia and Easy Flower Designs, but there are so many beautiful options out there. If you wanna use the same flowers as me, they are available for you to use totally free. I've also added some pretty greenery to help fill in spots and add dimension to the project. I'll tell you where to get all of these soon. Now, depending on the size of your wall, right? You're gonna be making quite a few flowers. So pick some styles, uh, that, a few different styles to keep it interesting. I'll show you some tips on planning for your material needs too. And to make the paper flowers, I used good quality cardstock, craft glue, and various tools, including a pen to make my flowers. Yes, you can totally cut them out by hand using the, the principal PDF, but I'll be honest, it's gonna take you a long time. A Cricut cutting machine really saves the day here. I used a Cricut Maker 3, but you can use any machine, even a Cricut Joy, for some of these flowers. And how do we turn all of these flowers into a wall? Well, you could just stick them onto your wall, but there's a better way. I'll show you how to attach the flowers to inexpensive foam core panels in different layouts. This strategy also makes moving and storing them so much easier than trying to move the flowers by themselves or move the whole wall in one piece. Just imagine like trying to move the whole wall. <laughs> so once you're ready to assemble the wall, you'll have a few options. One approach uses strong command strips to attach the panels directly to a wall or another solid surface. But I'll also show you how to work with a frame structure. Greg has come up with an ingenious way to create a solid breakdown wood frame that can be used over and over again. But you can also make a DIY PVC frame. We'll get to that later. If you do use a frame, you'll need about 10 hangers, a roll of clear packing tape, and some inexpensive landscape stakes to keep your wall rigid. I will show you how all of that works to make the most amazing and stable paper flower backdrop you have ever seen. It is so cool. So let's first start with the flowers, and then we will create a gorgeous flower wall together. Step one, get my free paper flower designs. First, go to jennifermaker.com slash 392 and look for libraries in the red bar at the top. Then either click get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. You can find the flower designs by searching the page for design number 392 and then click it to download a zip file with an SVG file for cutting on a Cricut or another cutting machine, a DXF file, and printable PDFs for cutting by hand. Since this project is very customizable and takes some planning, think about your goals before you start to cut out your flowers. I've included files to create several different flowers and greenery styles. There's a cone petal dahlia, a jumbo broad petal dahlia, a large easy flower, a medium broad petal dahlia, a medium easy flower, a mini broad petal dahlia, and some greenery. It's important to think about how large you want your backdrop to be and how many panels you'll need to create it. 
I'm making a wall eight feet by eight feet. That's really big. And I've decided to use 30, 20 by 16 inch panels to construct it. So after some experimenting, I found that the panels look best with one of the large flowers as a focal point surrounded by medium and small flowers, or with just a mix of medium and small flowers. Greenery looks great on both. So I'll show you how to estimate how many flowers you'll need using these three layouts. To test these layouts, I cut and assembled one 18 and a half inch broad petal dahlia, one cone dahlia, four large easy flowers, one medium dahlia, three medium easy flowers, eight mini broad petal dahlias, and eight sheets of greenery. Now everyone's flowers come out a little differently, just like in nature, but this is a really good place to start. Now you can cut these paper flowers by hand using the PDF file that you downloaded from my blog, but I'll be honest, that's really gonna take a long time. So if it's possible, I recommend you use a cutting machine instead, like a Cricut. So let me show you how to use a Cricut if you have access to one. First, go to Cricut Design Space and upload the SVG files from the file that you downloaded earlier. If you're not sure how to do this, get directions over at jennifermaker.com svgs. Now let me show you how to prepare a large, easy flower, but you can find free printable instructions and video tutorials for all of the other paper flowers on my website at jennifermaker.com slash paper flowers. Step two, prepare your flower designs. With your flower on the canvas, zoom out to see the entire design. This is what my large easy flower looks like in Cricut Design Space. Cutting more than one flower at a time saves time and material, so select the design and click Duplicate to create the quantity of flowers that you want. I usually cut a few at a time of each type to keep the pieces straight. You can also change their colors by selecting a flower and using the color box at the top menu to adjust it. Once you're happy with the flowers, make sure you have the right machine selected and click Make It. Step three, cut your paper flowers. If you're prompted, click on mat, 12 inch by 12 inch, and then click continue. If you're using the same paper as I am, change the material size to eight and a half by 11 inches, then click continue in the bottom right. On the next screen, select your material settings. I'll select medium cardstock, 80 pound, with more pressure. Some machines cut differently, so if you have trouble, try the cardstock for intricate cuts material setting instead. If you're using the same materials throughout and the Remember Material Settings box is available, like it is on my screen, click it to save yourself some time. Make sure your Cricut Standard Fine Point Blade in Clamp B is clean and free of debris. Place your first mat's cardstock on a green Cricut Standard Grip Machine mat. Use a brayer to adhere it well. Load the mat and press the flashing button to begin cutting. When the cut is finished, unload your mat, flip it over and roll it back to release the cardstock without any ripping or bending or any curling, right? and cut the rest of the mats using the colors on the screen for reference. Step four, assemble the paper flowers. Now for detailed assembly instructions of every flower that I'm using in my paper flower backdrop, please visit the original paper flower tutorials over at jennifermaker.com slash paper flowers. To make the greenery, you'll wanna fold each leaf in half to form a crease along the length. Curl up the edges and tips with your fingers or a bone folder to make a more realistic leaf shape. Step five, prepare the foam panel backing. If you plan to hang your panels on a wall, you can prep them in advance all at once or one at a time. If you're putting your panels on a frame as I am, skip this step. 
So to hang your panels on a wall, I recommend you use 3M command strips for picture hanging in the four corners on the back of your panel. Place one foam panel face down on your work surface and have four command strips ready. Take the protective backing off of a strip and stick it on a corner. Leave the exterior backing in place to protect the sticky surface. And do the same for the other corners. And that's it. Step six, test your paper flower layouts. Now the fun part, flower arranging. Since everyone's flowers and layouts will be different, you might need different quantities than my versions, but this is a good place to start. I'm making them on small panels because they're much easier to transport and store this way. First, I'll show you how I lay out a panel with an 18 and a half inch broad petal dahlia as the focal flower. Place your foam panel on the work surface and set the large flower so that the whole base touches the panel. Then add your other flowers and greenery to fill the panel. Since this is the largest focal flower, you won't have to add many. Remember the panels will be attached to each other so you can add small flowers and greenery during the installation to cover the edges as needed. Here's how my panel with the 18 and a half inch broad petal dahlia turned out. I recommend taking photos of any layouts that you like for reference as you start building the final panels. Next, experiment with a cone dahlia as the focal flower using the same steps. Here's how my panel with a cone dahlia turned out. Finally, play with a panel without a large flower as the focal point. These are helpful for less visible areas on the backdrop. Here's how my panel without a large flower turned out. Once you have a layout you like, pick up the flowers one at a time and add a 3M command strip for posters with the protective film removed to their backs, gently pressing them back in place. The larger flowers may take more than one strip. Remember, if you can see the panel around the edges, it's okay. I'll show you how to attach the panels to each other in a bit. I recommend cutting and assembling extra of the small flowers and greenery to cover the edges and seams when you hang up your panels to make your awesome backdrop. Step seven, plan out your backdrop. After you've created a version of each panel layout that you'd like, plan how many of each type you wanna have on your wall. You can either print duplicates of the photos that you took of each layout and move them around on your work surface or create a digital version. To keep things straight, I used a spreadsheet to plan my layouts. For my wall, I need to have five columns and six rows. So A1 will be the top left panel and E6 will be the bottom right. I put the type of panel that I want in each spot in the corresponding cell. For instance, I want to put a cone dahlia panel in cell A1. Then add up the number of each flower that you'll need and in which colors. Add a dozen or so mini dahlias and several sheets of greenery to fill in seams and thin spots. Again, this is just an estimate, but it is an awesome place to start. For my flower backdrop wall, I used the following flowers. 10 jumbo broad petal dahlias in the brightest pink, 15 medium broad petal dahlias in medium pink, 150 mini broad petal dahlias in pale pink, five jumbo cone dahlias in cream, 60 large easy paper flowers in various colors, 45 medium easy paper flowers in white, and various quantities of greenery to fill space as needed. When you're ready to put everything together, lay out your panels face down on a clean floor in the dimensions that you want to cover. With a permanent marker that won't transfer during storage, write a code on the back of each panel to remind you where it will go in the finished design. I labeled mine like a spreadsheet with letters A through E representing the columns and numbers one through six for the rows. So A1 will be the top left panel and E6 will be the bottom right. Now add the flowers to the panels following your notes. Next, I'm going to show you how to construct a wall to hold your paper flower backdrop and put it all together. Step eight, 
plan your wall frame. Now that we have all of the flowers on panels, it's time to turn these into a wall. As I said before, you can put these panels right onto a wall or another solid surface using command strips. But what if you need a freestanding wall for a special event? To have your wall be freestanding and stable, you need to create a frame. There are two good ways to make a backdrop frame. You can build one from PVC pipes or you can build one from wood as we have here. The PVC pipe one is okay, but nowhere near as heavy duty as the wood one is. If you only need a backdrop frame for a few uses, PVC is fine. But if you plan to use this uh, backdrop over and over again, or maybe you wanna let others use it or even rent it out, you'll probably want the more stable wood version. So I enlisted Greg's help to come up with a design for a stable wood backdrop frame that anyone with some basic tools could make. It doesn't cost too much, it breaks down to fit in a vehicle, and you can reuse it over and over. You can learn exactly how to make either the PVC backdrop frame or the wood backdrop frame over at jennifermaker.com slash DIY backdrop stand. Step nine, hang your paper flower backdrop. So once you have your backdrop frame up, and we've already put ours up, it's time to hang the flower panels from it. If you're doing a partial flower wall with a curtain, you'll wanna put your curtain up before you begin this next step. You may need some clamps to attach your curtain if you're using the wood version. I'm going to put our panels up one by one, starting with the top row. And so for this, we need either some over the door hooks or some hangers, a roll of clear packing tape, and about a dozen landscape stakes, minor bamboo, and a step stool. To begin, add hooks to the top of your top row of panels. If you're using a clothes hanger, just break or snap off the arms. If you're using over the door hangers, straighten the end that doesn't go over the door. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight, just straight enough that you can tape it onto the back top end of one of your top row panels. I prefer clothes hangers, so I'm putting the hooks from two clothes hangers on either end of the top edge of each top panel. I'm aligning the top of the hook with the top edge of the panel to make sure that the hook is not visible from the front. All right, I've got my hangers on the back of my first panel. Now my backdrop frame is turned around so we're looking at it from the back side, and I recommend you put your frame up where it's going to stay and then walk around and work from the back to hang all of your panels. This is what I'll be doing too. So we're just gonna hang the top row of panels in order from A1 to A5 across the top of the frame. Then we tape each panel together with clear packing tape. I recommend you use clear tape rather than something like duct tape because it'll be easier to cut apart later when you take this down and store it. Now be aware that some of your flowers are overlapping the panels in the front, so be sure you adjust the panels together properly before taping as close together as you can. Once you have the top row done, start on the next row taping each panel to the one above and the one beside it. Now tape alone is stable, but not very rigid. If you're setting this flower wall up outside or anywhere where there's a breeze, your flower wall may move on you and you don't want that. So to keep it rigid and stable, I'm simply taping landscape stakes to the back along each row and column using the same clear packing tape. The stakes are strong, inexpensive, and easy to remove later on.
All right, we finished. Now let's see how it looks from the other side. And here is our completed paper flower wall. Isn't this just a sight to behold? It is so pretty and it makes for the best photos. And this is really stable. It won't fall over or get knocked over by overly enthusiastic party guests. If you want, you can even stake it down outside or put sandbags on the legs for extra stability. But I don't think it's necessary unless you have a really uneven surface to work with. This sucker is not going anywhere. <laughs> So in the end, our paper flower backdrop took 285 paper flowers of different sizes and colors, plus a bunch of greenery. We used over 1,100 sheets of cardstock to make all of these flowers. It was a lot of work, but it was so worth it. I cannot wait to use this wall as a background for photos. And you can expect to see the flower wall show up in future projects too. Now I mentioned at the start that you don't have to make a huge wall like this to enjoy the impact of a flower backdrop. Decorating just a few panels makes a showstopper of a wall decoration. Or if you want to use it in photos but have limited time, just place three to five panels together to make a swag in front of a curtain. Even just a few of these beautiful flowers can really make a huge impact at any celebration. And once the party is over, the panels come apart really quite easily. Just cut the tape with a craft knife and separate. That's it. They are small enough to fit into a large storage bin. Just be careful when you're layering them so they don't crush each other or, you know, the bottoms of the flowers. If you're not going to move the flowers often, you could even just stack them in a closet with some paper towel in between to make removing dust really easy. But after all of this work, you might just want to leave it on display all the time. <laughs> now, if you have any questions about my paper flower backdrop or crafting techniques that I covered in this video or really anything else craft related that I might be able to help you with, please let me know. I love to help out. You can leave your question below this video or ask us over at our Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. I can't wait to see your paper flower backdrops. And that's it for today. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.